The following is a presentation of Apologetics Press. I remember as a child being in a class in school, it happened to be, and the teacher had asked a question. She said, what do we have that Adam did not have? I remember several of us, us in that class trying to rack our brains and think, what do we have that Adam did not have? One of us said, well, we had an extra rib. And of course, that, that probably wasn't the case because we weren't uh, born with, uh, Adam wasn't created without the rib. He would have had, and we couldn't think, what do we have that Adam did not have? And then I remember very vividly thinking, a, a, a belly button. Adam would not have had a belly button because he was not connected by an umbilical cord to a mother. And that made a lot of sense to me then. Do you think Adam had a belly button? Well, I don't know. Who does know? Probably none of us will know. But a question arises from that question. When Adam was two seconds old, how old did Adam look? 25? 30? 35? But he was only two seconds old. He was placed in the Garden of Eden and it was full of trees that could produce fruit almost immediately after they were created. If you had the opportunity to cut down a tree in the Garden of Eden and you counted the rings of that tree, how many rings would that tree have? A hundred? Two hundred? Three hundred? Who knows? But that tree would most likely look much older than two seconds old or three days old how old would that tree be? Oh, that tree would be three days old, but it would look much older. There is an idea called the idea of apparent age. And that suggests to us that when God created everything, He created things in a very mature state. Adam was old enough to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The fruit trees were old enough to bear fruit. Uh, the question arises then, how old is the earth? You know, there are not many things that the creationist and the evolutionist agree on. In fact, there are very, very few. But one of the things upon which both the creationist and evolutionist agree is this. In order for evolution to have occurred, the earth must be multiplied billions of years old. That's what everybody agrees on. Is it the case that the earth is multiplied billions of years old? That's the time that you need for evolution to happen. Did you know that there are over 75 different ways to date the earth? And over half of them give an age for the earth in just a few thousand or maybe just a few million years? Some of them give an age for the earth in just a few hundred years. And we know those aren't accurate, but they are all based on assumptions that are used by evolutionists. You see, the evolutionist says, well, we can look at the earth and we can see that it's multiplied millions of years old. It just looks so old. It looks so old compared to what? How would you know what a young earth looked like? And how old did the earth look when it was created just two seconds after its creation? Those are all very good questions. But the evolutionist says, well, we can prove the earth is multiplied millions or billions of years old. We have all of these dating methods and we can date the rocks and we can date those fossils by those rocks and we can prove that the earth is millions of years old and it gives us plenty of time for evolution. I'm sorry, but you cannot. The evolutionists cannot prove the earth is multiplied millions of years old. And I'm going to show you several reasons why. Does it surprise you that according to the evolutionary time frame, that the age of the earth in the universe doubles about every all 20 to 40 years? You see, when Charles Darwin came out with his idea in 1859 of evolution, people looked at the earth and they said, oh, it must be maybe somewhere around 200 million years old. And they would suggest 
that they had dating methods that prove that. And from 1859 until now, we have increased that from 200 million years or so to 4.6 billion years. And all along the way, evolutionists has, have said, well, we've got a dating method that proves this number. And we've got a dating method that proves that number. And now we've got a dating method that proves 4.6 billion, uh, supposedly. When it doubles to uh, 9.2 billion, are we going to have dating methods that supposedly prove that the earth is 9.2 billion years old? Oh, I'm sure there will be some. But what will that say about all the dating methods that they have suggested that prove the other dates? Well, it would suggest that all of those were false dating methods. And that's what I think we can show in this particular lesson. Like I said, 75 different ways to date the earth, many of them giving us a young age for the earth. Let's just look at one of those ideas. Henry Morris from the Creation Research Institute or, or the Institute for Creation Research, ICR, has suggested to us an idea known as population statistics. Population statistics are simply dealing with how long humans have been on the earth. Supposedly, humans in one shape, form, or fashion, according to the evolutionary time frame, have been on the earth for about three to five million years. Now, we're going to be very conservative and we're going to say that humans have been on the earth only for about one million years, uh, according to the evolutionary time frame. And we're going to suppose that a generation, the time that a new generation appears, is about 42 years. And we're going to be very, very conservative and say there is a population growth rate of only 2.4. 2.4 is a tiny growth rate. That's that each pair of, of people have 2.4 children. They would have to have two to keep the population the same. The 0.4 is a tiny increase. Do you know that if people had been on the earth for just one million years, with a generation being 42 years and a growth rate of 2.4% or 2.4 children, that now, even counting wars and famines and plagues and pestilences, there would be 1 times 10 to the 5,000th people in the universe, uh, on the earth rather. Do you know how many people that the entire universe could hold? The entire universe at 20 billion light years estimation could only hold 1 times 10 to the 100 people if you packed a person in every single part of the universe. And yet, we are supposed to believe that humans have been here for 3.5 mil 3 to 5 million years. Did you know if you put humans on this earth about 6,000 years ago and you keep those same parameters with the generation at 42 years with the 2.4 children growth rate that you get a number of about 4.34 billion very close to our 6 billion well how is that how is it that we can show humans have not been on this earth for multiplied millions of years, even for three or four, even for one million. But only they have been here for just a few thousand. Uh, let's look at something else. The evolutionist would suggest to us that when you look at the geological column, when you go to something like the Grand Canyon and you see all of those different layers, those layers were laid down over millions of years under an idea known as uniformitarianism. Uniformitarianism is a big, you know, big word that means simply this. The present is the key to the past. That things operate now as they have always operated. And the evolutionist looks at how some things are laying down layers, sees how it is sometimes a very slow process, and says if one inch of this soil is laid down over 10 years, then a foot of that soil must be laid down over, and you do the math. And some of these layers, they would say, are multiplied millions of years old. They've got a problem when they say that. Sometimes we find fossils of like a fish or a plant or a well 
that will cut through several layers. These are called polystrate fossils. Poly meaning many, straight or strata meaning fossils that go through many layers. How in the world is a catfish going to stand on its tail for thousands or tens of thousands of years while these layers slowly build up around it? How in the world is a huge whale going to stand on its tail for hundreds or thousands or millions of years while layers build up around it? Is that a plausible explanation? <laughs> Absolutely not. What happens to a whale when it stands on its tail for one year? It decays. It becomes almost unrecognizable as a whale. It certainly would never stand on its tail for 10 or 20 or 30,000 years while it is buried slowly over multiplied years? That's not plausible. Let me give you another example of how we know these layers were not laid down over multiplied millions of years. In the early 1980s, Mount St. Helens exploded. In that eruption, that volcanic eruption, a huge dam was formed. Several, several days and months after that, this dam broke and a huge mudslide proceeded to slide down the side of the mountain, a monumental, catastrophic mudslide. In a single day, a cavern was carved out, a canyon was carved that was almost exactly one-fortieth to scale of the Grand Canyon in a single day. Day. In fact, this canyon is known as the Little Grand Canyon. Well, how is it that in a single day you can look at this canyon and see multiplied layers that allegedly could be laid down over millions of years? But they weren't. They were laid down in a single catastrophe. Do you know of any catastrophe that could lay down uh, layers like you see in the Grand Canyon? on a larger scale than the eruption of Mount St. Helens? I do. One that you read about in the Bible. Noah's flood. The flood where the Bible says that the fountains of the deep broke open that would cause cataclysmic geological formation and reformation uh, several times larger than the eruption of Mount St. Helens. A very plausible answer to many of the layers that we see. Well, the evolutionist says, well, we can prove that the, the geological column, the rocks, are multiplied billions of years old. Well, how can you do that? Sometimes people think that evolutionists use a dating method known as carbon-14 dating to give the millions of years of time that they need. That is, is simply not true. Carbon-14 dating cannot be used to date anything but once living material. And even the inventor of carbon-14 dating, W.F. Libby, said that it can only be used to date things in thousands of years. And in fact, we have discovered that it doesn't really even work all that well for thousands of years. It, sometimes they would date using carbon-14 carbon dating freshly killed seals that give dates of over a thousand years or a living mollusk that would give dates over a thousand or fifteen hundred years. Sometimes they would date different particles of the same musk ox that would date seven thousand years differently. Carbon-14 dating cannot be used to get any type of evolutionary millions of year time frame and is often inaccurate even when dealing with a few thousand years. So how is it that the evolutionists claim that they can get multiplied billions of years for earth history? There is a new type of dating method that they would suggest to us proves this beyond the shadow of a doubt. Radiometric dating methods. They would say, yes, radiometric dating methods prove that the earth is billions of years old. Now, like we said earlier, ironically, there have always been dating methods that have been suggested that prove the alleged age of the earth, which do nothing of the sort. But let's look at radiometric dating methods. They would say, yes, here's the process. 
Suppose you have a radioactive element like uranium. It breaks down into a daughter element like lead. The parent element being uranium, the daughter element being lead. Here's how that works. Suppose you have 50 ounces of uranium. It's half-life. That means the amount of time it's going to take half of that uranium to break down into lead is supposed to be 4.5 billion years or so. So you've got 50 ounces of uranium, half-life at 4.5 billion years. So in 4.5 billion years, that 50 ounces of uranium is going to have broken down into 25 ounces of uranium and 25 ounces of lead, approximately. So if you find a rock that contains 25 ounces of uranium and 25 ounces of lead, then you can calculate that that rock is how old? Well, the evolutionist would suggest to us you can calculate that that rock is 4.5 billion years old or so, give or take some uh, technical stipulation. What's the problem with that? Uh, the problem with that is it's based on several assumptions that you simply cannot grant the evolutionist. Assumption number one, no daughter element was in the rock to start with. Oh, you see, what if there was some of that lead in the rock to start with? What if 22 or 23 ounces of lead was in that rock to start with? Would that skew your dates a little bit? Let's illustrate. Suppose you walk up to someone's pool and you see that it's a 3,000 gallon pool. They are running a hose pipe into it and that hose pipe is pumping 10 gallons an hour. You do some math there. It's a 3,000 gallon pool pumping 10 gallons an hour. Then it's obviously been pumping for up 30, 30 hours or so. Actually, what would it be 300 hours or so rather? So you knock on the door. You say, hello, friend. I have done some calculations. I see that you've been running your hose pipe for 300 hours. They say, oh, no, no, we haven't been doing that. Last night it was a torrential downpour and it filled our entire pool up all except 10 gallons. We've only been running our hose pipe for an hour. <laughs> now, your calculations are off just a little bit, aren't they? Because you assumed that there was no water in that pool to begin with. And that was a faulty assumption. Is it the case that there could be some lead in the rock before that element started breaking down, uranium started breaking down? Sure, certainly could. Assumption number two, nothing has touched that rock, nothing has seeped in or crept out of it in the 4.5 billion year history that it's supposed to have had. That is a very serious assumption. Could some water have leaked into that rock and added some lead? Sure. Could some water have leaked into that rock and taken some lead or some uranium away? Sure. What has happened to a rock in 4.5 billion years? Uh, who knows? We can't prove that there is a rock that old, but if there were a rock that old, all kinds of things would happen to that rock. You cannot grant the assumption that nothing has happened to that rock to take parent or daughter element in or out of it in 4.5 billion years. Uh, assumption number three, the rate of decay of uranium to lead has always been the same. Now, suppose that we look at that idea and we say, yeah, we assume that the rate's always been the same. What's going to happen if you make that type of assumption? Suppose you go out into the woods and you see a man chopping wood and you see that he has chopped down 25 trees and you see that it takes him an hour to chop down a single tree. And you say, sir, I see you've been chopping down an hour, a tree for a single hour. It took you one hour to chop down one tree. There are 25 trees on the ground. I am going to assume that you've been chopping 25 hours. He says, oh, no, no. He says, earlier today, when my belly was full and my axe was sharp, I was chopping down six trees an hour. Just in this last hour have I only been chopping down one tree. Oh, well, so then our calculation is off by 20 hours or so because we had the faulty assumption that the rate has always been the same. If you allow the evolutionist to use those assumptions, then if you use the same assumptions on other dating methods like the, uh, the decay of the Earth's magnetic field or the ratio of helium and hydrogen in the atmosphere. If you get to use those same assumptions, you will see that you can get a very young Earth using 
those assumptions. They simply cannot be granted to the evolutionists because they are assumptions that are not proven. So, so how old is the earth? Well, I'm here to tell you that I can tell you exactly how old the earth is. Oh, would you like a, a number as to how old the earth is? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't think I can give you an exact number. But I can tell you that the Bible tells you how old the earth is. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20 verse 11, For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them. It's very self-explanatory. What does that leave out? The heavens, the earth, the seas, all that is in them. Does that leave anything out? No, it doesn't. In fact, that gets includes everything. Well, so we've got six days where the Lord made everything. Do you know what else the Bible says? The Bible also says that in Mark chapter 10 verse 6, in the beginning God created them male and female talking about humans. So in the beginning God created humans male and female. The beginning of creation, when you look back in Genesis chapter 1, you see that God created humans on day 6. How old is the earth? Oh, that's easy. It's exactly five days older than humans. But I guess that's not really what you were wanting, was it? Uh, you were wanting more of a number. Well, I think I might can give you a little bit more of a number. If you were to take the time that we have been on this earth and try to get back to the time that Jesus was on this earth, how many years would that be? That's pretty simple. Uh, the year now is about 2007 A.D. That's the year. It's actually January. Just turned that. About how long has it been from us to Jesus? About 2,000 years. Secular history will give us that. We are in the year 2007 A.D. Anno Domini in the year of our Lord. That's pretty self-explanatory. Pretty easy to understand. Well, how long was it from Jesus to Abraham? Secular history and everybody involved will tell you that that was about 2,000 years. Everybody understands that. It's not a number that's even up for much debate at all. So from us to Jesus, about 2,000 years. From Jesus to Abraham, about 2,000 years. So we just have one more piece of the puzzle. How long was it from Abraham to Adam? That's a good question. Did you know that in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 5 and Genesis chapter 11, the Bible gives us genealogies. Genealogies that tell us the age of the father when they had their son. And Adam was 130 years and he begot Seth. And Seth was, and it goes down and tells us. And you know what you can do? You can take that 130 years that Adam lived before he had his son and add it to the age that the son was before he had his next son, and that son was before he had his next son, and you can get a very good concept of how long it was from Abraham to Adam. Now, from Jesus to Abraham, there were about 55 generations, and those 55 generations composed about 2,000 years. From Abraham to Adam, there were only about 20 generations. And those 20 generations composed about 2,000 years. Well, you say, why were there 55 generations between Jesus and Abraham and those 55 composed 2,000 years, but there were only 20 generations between Abraham and Adam and those 20 composed 2,000 years? Why such a big difference? Think about that just for a second. The ages of the patriarchs in Adam's time. Adam living to be over 900. Methuselah living to be 969. It makes perfect sense. The abbreviated number of generations because of their long time spans. But someone will say, well, aren't there huge gaps in the genealogies? Well, did you know that the only reason we know of any gaps in the genealogies is because other texts fill those gaps in for us. So if we might have a gap in a genealogy, but another text fills it in. I guess then it wouldn't be a, a gap after all, would it? 
And when we look in the New Testament, we look in Jude 14. Jude 14 says, Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied. And tells you what Enoch prophesied. Did you know when you look back in Genesis and you look at Enoch and you count down how many he was from Adam, guess where he was? The seventh from Adam. New Testament commentary showing us that we know that there were no gaps in the first seven for sure. That only leaves you 13 generations. Suppose you wanted to try to put humans on this earth for 3.5 million years. Do you know how many years you're going to have to put in between those gaps of the 13 generations? About 270,000 years. And that's only going to give you a number of 3.5 million. That's not going to get you anywhere close to the multiplied millions or billions that the evolutionists need. Oh no. No, the Bible makes it clear that humans have been on this earth from the very beginning. Only five days separate the creation of humanity from the beginning of the universe. How long have humans been here? There is another clear picture that from Adam to Abraham, about 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus, about 2,000 years. And from Jesus to us, about 2,000 years. Everything that we know as factual information, scientifically and biblically, fits into this framework. How old is the earth? The Bible is clear. There are not multiply millions or billions of years of earth history. There are only a few thousand. Thank you for being with us this lesson. I look forward to studying more about God, His Word, and His world throughout the remaining lessons. This has been a presentation of Apologetics Press, an organization dedicated to the defense of New Testament Christianity. Visit us on the web at apologeticspress.org or call 800-234-8558.